In this video, I'd like to give a little bit of an introduction and overview about trackers. Trackers are a particular kind of software that's designed to imitate and emulate the sound hardware that we find in various video game systems. Uh, they're very closely related to chiptune. They're used by a lot of chiptune musicians, but they can also be used to kind of understand how the architecture of these sound chips works. They can be used to compose uh, music or they can be used to analyze actual music files from vintage games. So just to start off with, what is a tracker? Um, this screen that you see in front of you is one of the main pages from a tracker called Little Sound DJ. And this is actually the one that's talked about and used in the documentary Reformat the Planet. Uh, Little Sound DJ or LSDJ came out in 2000, um, so it's been around for a little while, and uh, it's a tracker that imitates, it runs on the Game Boy, I shouldn't say it imitates, the tracker is actually a program, it used to be available on an actual cartridge that would go into a real Game Boy, um, and it interacts with the Game Boy's sound hardware. So just to back up for a moment, what is a tracker? Now, in order to understand what's significant or what's special about the way that a tracker works, the way that it works with music, you have to think about uh, other systems of music and music notation. So if you think of regular music notation like we saw at the beginning of the course, you know, you have a staff that goes left to right, time goes left to right, pitch goes up and down, notes have specified values and uh, the type of dot you know with or without a beam filled or unfilled etc shows how long the note unfolds in a musical tempo so you have to know i'm in 4-4 the tempo is 120 beats per minute and that's going to dictate how long a note lasts and then its place on the staff in a line or a space is going to dictate how that note sounds what pitch it has so another type of music notation is what's called piano roll. This is an example of piano roll notation from an older version of, of GarageBand. Uh, and what you see going up the side is a piano keyboard. It's as if it's been turned 90 degrees. So that to the bottom of the screen are the lower notes, up to the top of the screen are the higher notes. Then time unfolds left to right. So it's a similar metaphor to music notation. Uh, pitch goes up and down, time goes left and right. Each chunk here is a measure. One, two, three, four measures, and then each slice vertically is a beat. So you can see that uh, what piano roll notation is conveying is hold this note C2 for two beats, then go down here. If I turn my head sideways, play a G for two beats, then go down here, play an F for two beats, etc. Up here, same thing. C for two beats, E enters on the second beat and holds for one. Uh, so it kind of mechanically spells out how long each key is supposed to be pressed for. And we call it piano roll notation because it literally comes uh, from the types of piano rolls that were in player pianos. If you think about seeing, you know, probably in a movie or in a photograph, a player piano from olden times, they have a literal roll in the front of the piano in the top that is telling the mechanism of the piano how long to hold down which keys for. And that's how player piano music was actually programmed. One other sort of alternate type of music notation is tablature. Tablature was invented for lutes actually, you know, it was used a lot in the, around the 16th century. Uh, people like John Dowland would compose songs for lute, and they used tablature. And what tablature does is it represents the fingerboard of a stringed instrument, um, and it tells you where to put your fingers on there, which notes to play. So if I zoom in a bit, we see that we have regular conventional notation at the top. Then down here, you've got one, two, three, four, five, six strings of the guitar. And the numbers are telling you where to put your fingers. So this two is the second string, the A string, the second fret. That plays a B. 
you know, up third string, fourth fret is going to give you the F sharp there. So it's telling you to play the introduction to uh, this Metallica song. Bum, 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 bum. So it's two, four, two, open string, zero means an open string. So it's a mode of music notation um, that if you know the rhythm already, you don't actually need to be able to read notes. You just need to have the guitar fingerboard in front of you and say, okay, one finger here on the second fret, one finger here on the fourth fret of the next string, and so forth. Uh, so it's become very popular in modern times to help people learn to play songs on guitar, even if they might not know how to read music. So each of these systems has a kind of a metaphor for the way that they represent music. You know, usually it's left to right time, up and down pitch, um, on the fingerboard, on the tablature, you're sort of getting a an almost visual representation of these are the strings, and then each number is telling you which fret on which string to use. It doesn't have much of a representation of time, other than the fact that notes that are longer might be more spaced out. So trackers are unique because they're a very different conception of how time works. So, for example, in this tracker we see four channels across the top here. These are very familiar from the way the original Nintendo worked. The Game Boy has very similar sound channels. You've got your two pulse channels, which create pulse waves. Then you have your triangle wave channel. Then you have your noise channel. You can sort of finish that there. So what you notice, first of all, is that all four of our possible voices are on the screen at once. Then, if we look to the side here, this column, this column represents the way that time is divided up. This uses hexadecimal notation. You know, it goes starts at zero, all the way up through nine, and then A, B, C, D, E, F. So if you add this all up, you have 16 values on the right-hand column. And then the left-hand column is full of zeros, but it would increment um, so that you know, 0 through 16 is like this with a 0 in the first column. Then if you want the number 17, you'd have 1, 0, 18, 1, 1, and so forth. And it sort of increments each 16 and goes on. It's very convenient, um, and I think no coincidence for the people who originally designed these sound systems, that 16 divides by 4, which can give you a sort of regular 4-4 four, four measure that's made up of 4 beats that can each be divided into four segments. Sixteenth notes are a very common uh, small unit of musical time. So we could split this up here, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, there. So you sort of have one, two, three, four. So basically one screen on a tracker like LSDJ represents one measure of music. Then, uh, if we look just a couple of other features here, the tempo can be changed. Right now it's eighth note equals 128, but you can go into various screens and uh, change that. And then down here is a sort of navigation, a way of visualizing your whole project. The user can scroll between these different pages, and each one has a sort of upper and lower page as well. Um, so I'm going to turn off the screen drawing mode and then actually demonstrate a little bit of how LSDJ works, work through it a little bit, and uh, get you started on this one. And we'll also look a little bit at Famitracker, which is another tracker which imitates the sound of the Famicom or the Nintendo Entertainment System. So now I'm going to get out of the screen drawing mode. I'll actually pick up the controller and show you a little bit about how LSDJ works.